Osteoporosis is all about bones and whether bones are strong or whether bones are weak, whether bones will fracture or break easily or whether bones will uh, withstand things like falls and accidents without breaking. So essentially osteoporosis is a condition where the bones get thinner and as a result they get more fragile and as a result they can break more easily than normal. Uh, the best way that you know whether you've got osteoporosis is not to wait until a broken bone occurs but to do something called a bone density scan which is a very mild x-ray gives about a 17th as much radiation as a standard chest x-ray so it's a very easy scan to do um, you lie down and get your scanned and you can also get your the bones of your back scanned because they're the main bits that are at risk of breaking and then depending on how high or low your bone density is you will know whether you've got osteoporosis or not um, sometimes when people do break a bone, if they've not had a bone density scan before, uh, the people dealing with the broken bone, whether it's either the GP or an orthopedic fracture clinic, will get uh, you advised to go and have a bone density scan, especially if it's a fracture of the hip or the backbone or the forearm. And those areas are altogether more at risk of broken bones because they have more woven bone in them, uh, a bit like the inside of a, a crunchy sweet, which has got lots of little air pockets and then walls full of uh, bone. And it's that type of bone that's at risk of osteoporosis, much more than the outside bone of the long bones of the arms and legs. So if somebody has those sort of fractures, they should be assessed. If somebody has a very strong family history, so a mother perhaps who's had a uh, a, a, a fracture of the backbone or a fracture of the, the hip um, and then might have given a genetic tendency towards osteoporosis, a strong family history might send you to go and uh, have a bone density. Osteoporosis is really common. Um, it's common with increasing age and it's more common in women than men because uh, the bones in women are nurtured by uh, the sex hormone estrogen which um, starts to be uh, good for the bones at the time of puberty and stops being good for the bones when the levels of estrogen drop off at the menopause. So um, it's really important to focus on women past the menopause or sometimes women who've had uh, an upset of their uh, hormones through life. So when they might have had several years without seeing periods, those people can be very um, subject to osteoporosis. Um, men get it as well. It's estimated that one in five women will have an osteoporotic fracture sometime in their lives. So that's pretty common. Uh, you're bound to know somebody who's got osteoporosis. Uh, and it's estimated that one in 12 men, because men tend to be as a whole bigger with thicker bones and perhaps stronger bones. So they have to lose slightly more bone to become uh, osteoporotic. So there are certain key things that might put you at risk more than that person or that person. So it's one of the rare conditions where being big and strong and heavy protects you. So it's good to be big. It's good to be active because it tends to be people who aren't active, who had sedentary lives, who perhaps can't walk normally because of condition they've got. So maybe a neurological condition like multiple sclerosis, maybe a paralysis, maybe something that puts someone in a wheelchair, that's really bad for bone density. So that puts people at risk. And, and people can be at risk if they're not absorbing all of the nourishment that builds good bones like vitamin D and calcium. So people with bowel conditions, people with malabsorption, people with chronic diseases of the kidney or of the liver can be at risk of osteoporosis. And then people who take lots of steroids, so moderate to high doses for long periods of time. So for instance, people with bad asthma who have to go on to courses of steroids frequently or take high levels of steroid inhaler, people with other types of disease such as eye disease um, or neurological or uh, lung disease overall that have to take steroids. So steroids really do predispose some of our rheumatological conditions 
like rheumatoid arthritis are also associated with a higher frequency of osteoporosis. So we tend to check everybody with chronic rheumatic arthritis disease uh, for their bones. So there's lots of different things that can um, predispose to osteoporosis. Uh, the other thing that's important is that if you have a menopause early, be, before the age of 45, you then cut off the estrogen nourishment of the bones a little bit earlier than normal, and therefore you might have accelerated uh, osteoporosis. So all of those things that um, uh, can harm bones, and then the usual ones like drinking too much alcohol, not just because you fall over and break a bone, because alcohol is bad for your bones, and smoking heavily. So it's another reason for, for not uh, doing either of those in excess. Osteoporosis is really um, defined as being severe if the numbers on your bone density drop down very low. There are certain mathematical numbers that appear on the bone density scan um, that are minus numbers. And the lower the minus number, the more severe the osteoporosis. So the cutoff for having osteoporosis on a bone density scan is to have what's called a T-score below minus 2.5. And the further that drops, minus 3.5, minus 4.5, minus 5.5, the more severe is the bone density loss. But that doesn't necessarily tell you how severe the osteoporosis can become. So the severity is generally firstly measured by how severe the drop in bone density, but secondly by how easy it is for you to get a broken bone or a fracture. So severe osteoporosis really is people with lots of different fractures. So you've only got two wrists, you've only got two hips, so you only tend to fracture hips and wrists once or twice. So double fracture of the hips, both sides can be really, really difficult. And you can say, well, that's pretty severe. But possibly the most severe type of osteoporosis is the osteoporosis that causes broken bones in the spine. So we have a whole stack of bones in the spine from the neck downwards. We have seven in the neck, we have 12 in the middle of the spine, the thoracic vertebrae, and we have uh, another five in the lumbar spine. So we've got lots of little building blocks of bone and if a bone in the spine breaks easily, it can crush down. And it tends to crush slightly more at the front than it does at the back. So what happens is, if people are facing forwards that way, they tend to develop a stoop in their back, so round-shouldered. Um, so just like the pictures of uh, elderly people on road traffic signs, which show them leaning forward, holding onto sticks, and severe osteoporosis can cause that kyphosis or bone forward stoop to become really bad. So actually that people have difficulty digesting because um, the rib cage is pushing onto the tummy. People have difficulty walking or mobilizing and even in untreated osteoporosis uh, can have to resort to a wheelchair sometimes because it is so uncomfortable to walk around. So the key to osteoporosis management is to recognize it early and put all of the preventative medicines and advice on board. So severe bone density loss doesn't turn into severe osteoporosis with multiple vertebral fractures and both hips fracturing. So home remedies. Well, home remedies are okay for osteoporosis. There are certain ground rules as regards home remedies. So number one is to eat a nice healthy diet with plenty of vitamin D and calcium. Now that can be a problem if there's a strict vegan diet because um, calcium is in a number of uh, dairy products, a number of things like cheese and, uh, and butter and strict vegans wouldn't be eating that. So uh, you need to take calcium supplementation as a home remedy if you're short on calcium in your diet. So there's the calcium part of it. And then there's the vitamin D home remedy part of it. And um, vitamin D is um, absorbed both by mouth and also converted by uh, sunshine in the skin 
where vitamin D is turned from vitamin D precursor into active vitamin D. So uh, one of the home remedies is obviously get out in the sunshine. But of course, the dermatologists will say, don't get out in the sunshine because you'll develop skin cancer. The bone doctors say, get out into the sunshine, otherwise you'll uh, develop osteoporosis. So you can't really win. Um, however, a moderate amount of sunshine, uh, an extra vitamin D if your vitamin D is low. So get your doctor to check your vitamin D levels. And vitamin D supplements are bought over the counter in the chemist shop. So you've got calcium, you've got vitamin D, and then you've got exercise, which is important in osteoporosis, but it's slightly different to what most people expect to hear in that it isn't a lot more exercise that helps. It's avoiding a sedentary life. So the people who get osteoporosis are the people that take no exercise at all. So what the uh, Royal Osteoporosis Society and other people dealing with osteoporosis advise is that you take at least 45 minutes of foot to floor exercise. So walking or light jogging, if you can do it at least twice a week. So it's not a big ask. If you do lots more, you won't have very strong bones, but you'll have nice strong muscles supporting your bones and your skeleton and have less of a chance to fall over. So you're talking about avoiding a sedentary life and taking a, a moderate amount of exercise, supplementing your vitamin D and supplementing your calcium. And there are one or two other things that make my heart sing, such as the advantage of beer for osteoporosis, because Beer is rich in silicon and silicon is good for osteoporosis. So it justifies popping down to the pub and having a couple of beers. Hooray. Um, it's also possible that some dietary uh, additives like soya are helpful for uh, bone density and osteoporosis. Soya contains a chemical called ipriflavone, which has been shown to be beneficial for osteoporosis. And the rate of osteoporotic fracture is lower in countries with rich soya intake. So it may well be that uh, other dietary additives such as that can help. So there are some very good treatments for osteoporosis, excellent treatments, apart from the, uh, the home um, remedies and self-management that I've mentioned. So um, the two basic medicines for osteoporosis, one is called a bisphosphonate and the other is called denosumab. And a bisphosphonate is a, a chemical salt that's very good at clinging on to calcium and um, stopping um, calcium being lost from the bones. And it was first used by farmers in uh, Spain who were growing oranges and lemons, who noticed the oranges and lemons didn't grow quite so well when the water was hard. And there was lots of calcium in the irrigation water. So they put bags of this bisphosphonate salt in to make the water soft and the oranges and lemons grew very well. And it's been found that um, you can use the same salt chemicals to protect the calcium in your bones from being lost. And it's usually given as a, a weekly tablet or a, a yearly injection. Uh, if you can't take that sort of salt um, tablet, uh, alindronic acid, you tend to then be uh, advised to take uh, an injection. And there's a monoclonal antibody uh, protein called denosumab that's given uh, every six months to uh, by injection at your own GPs just in the surface of the skin. And that's very good at protecting bones. So you've got really good treatments. And then you've got really, really good treatments because there's one called teriperitide that's used in extreme severe cases of osteoporosis uh, to build the bones up. It's a very expensive treatment and very awkward to take because you have to inject yourself every morning subcutaneously for at least 18 months and sometimes two years. And you can show that really, really thin bones can be built up by it. But we don't use it in too many people because um, it's not indicated unless osteoporosis is quite uh, severe. If you don't use treatments for osteoporosis and stick your head in the sand like an ostrich, what you can end up with is um, an awful lot of fractures that might otherwise be avoidable. So 
in older people, hip fractures aren't just fractures of the hip. Sometimes they can result in big changes in life. And somebody who was managing perfectly well on their own at home at the age of 75 or 80 has a hip fracture and then can't get mobile again and then actually can't live at home on their own and has to go into a care home where they may not be half as happy as they were at home. So avoiding fractures is very important, but it's also very important to prevent that development of backbone curvature, shortening of height, pain in the back as uh, vertebral bodies or backbones fracture. So it's not advisable to just rest on your laurels if you know you've got osteoporosis. But unfortunately, because the word has still got to be spread far and wide, there are still quite a number of people out there with osteoporosis who haven't been recognized because either they have had a fracture and nobody's advised them that it might be to do with thin bones, uh, or they've just not been offered a bone density scan or not had their vitamin D levels done. So all of this is important to lead to much better bone health in the other uh, people uh, of our community, especially postmenopausal women.